Hey y'all, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. We are here for another chicken scratch talk time and I actually moved it inside today. The wind is whipping down here in Alabama today. So we've got a cold front coming in. It's supposed to be 44 the next three nights. The high tomorrow is 69 and yesterday it was 80 and we were in flip flops. So here we are. But anyways, good news. Gardens are growing. I've got peaches and cream corn that is five inches tall. Y'all, we'll be side dressing that in probably a week to two weeks. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the rain. We're not supposed to get rain until next weekend, but we're we're rocking. We've got tomato plants two foot tall. I am so excited. Bush beans everywhere. Cold weather did get all my peppers. That's fine. I've got some inside. Uh, all the hot peppers like jalapeno and cayenne, they're done for. Done, done, done. We have not had a frost, but they just they couldn't handle it. I've got a few bell peppers left, but... You know what? I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not going to worry about it. Backups. I've got backups. That's all that matters. <laughs> so, anyways, and we are going to do a video on why our chickens are not hatching. So, check that one out. I think you'll be very interested in that. I'm going to do that today, actually. So, well, that's a whole nother story. This is Chicken Scratch Talk Time. We're going to talk to you. So, put it on while it, whatever you're doing. Cooking, cleaning, Listen to me, okay? This is talk time. So, welcome back. Thank you to all of the new subscribers. Y'all, I was kind of just dumbfounded this past week. We got, I don't know how many. I started these little money-saving tips of the day. So, what I'm trying to do is do a YouTube short once a day to show you how to save money. Just little ideas that I'm thinking of to try to get you to save money, okay? And just things that I think of that have helped us. Y'all, we've had the best response from that. People are subscribing right and left. They love that. They want to see that. So, I'm going to tell you right here, right now, I am not the world's best. I'm not a financial advisor, but I will tell you, I can save a dime, okay? <laughs> so, just follow along. We're going to try to do those every day. I, I'm going to set a goal. I'd like to do every day for a year if possible, if not 90 days. I may miss a few here and there. Just a few seconds to show you how to save money. And that to me seems like what everybody's wanting to see right now. I've done all different types of videos. And it seems like that's really what people are after. And y'all, I'm I'm on Facebook and all these groups about recipes and, you know, um, I, I'm in every everything, okay? And I, I read this stuff and... It used to be once in a blue moon you would see somebody say, Well, I don't get paid for the next two weeks. What can I feed me and my kids? And you know, that's just heart wrenching. It has gotten to where it is every night now. People my age are with little kids are putting on the internet, what can we feed our kids? We have no money. What was some cheap, cheap, cheap recipes? Y'all, this is this is tragic. It's tragic. My heart goes out to you and hopefully Follow along. Maybe maybe you can save a dime. Save, save a penny, save a dime, something. Something, somehow, somewhere. My motto is live poor to be rich. That's that's just about it. And, you, you know, it money isn't everything. But when, when you can save it, save it, stretch it. Don't let it rule you. You know, just, hey, some people don't have to have it. You know, I mean, and sometimes it's better living that way. That's like way back when with our great grandparents, you know, they didn't have a lot of money. A lot of them didn't even know that they didn't have a lot of money. They just knew that's how life was and they made do with what they had. And that's what brings us to this chicken scratch talk time today is why save money? Why? Why? First of all, you're not as wasteful. That really, I mean, you think about it. I have lived where I chunked everything. Y'all, I say this ashamed, but I would throw stuff away that was brand new. I, I've done that once or twice in my life. That's terrible. That's terrible. You know, I think we all go through that, but that's senseless. That money could have been put somewhere else. Don't do that. Don't do that. Second of all, if you can get out of debt, that's, that's the ticket. Get out of debt now. Put that money back for you and your family, or at least be able to live off of what you bring home. 
okay? Th this debt business, a lot of people can't help but to be in debt. I understand that. Some of this, trying to go out and live in the Taj Mahal on a by any sausage diet is, is a problem, okay? That, I'm serious, and I can say this, I live in an old house, is, you know, in fact, my great-grandfather built this house, it's been added on to, and it's been passed down like socks in the family, everybody and their mothers lived in it, <laughs> but I, that don't matter to me, it's not my priorities, okay? You, you need to look at what is realistic. It is not realistic for every one of us to go live in a five-story home with two in-ground pools and you know I mean come on man that's like the Beverly Hillbillies I mean that I think everybody just wants to go out and do that I don't know I mean but I lay down at night and know that I don't owe a soul on this earth <laughs> do you know how liberating that is praise the Lord I don't owe anybody and that's that's why I save money I don't owe anybody. If you can get debt free, I mean, you may not like living in that lifestyle, I'm telling you right now, but you'll be a new woman. You'll be a new man. You'll be a new, you'll, you'll feel like you're ready to climb Mount Everest. I'm telling you, it's, it's mighty nice, real nice. Things happen. Things happen where you need money. I may have um, an emergency tomorrow where I need to get my hands on some cash. I can't imagine if I had none you know, no way to have any, any emergency money. I, I can't imagine that. I, that's why you save. You save for an emergency. You save for something like that. And y'all, honestly, I may be kind of talking way out in left field. I just, I don't care about materialistic things. I used to. I used to be that gal. I would want to go out and just have all this stuff and buy all this stuff. And it just really the older I get, it it doesn't mean anything. I got out there, I started growing my own food, I started enjoying my own land, enjoying my own life, and I realized I don't have to have all this. It's really just cheap substitutes. That's it for happiness. That's, that's what I got to say. I mean, it is. It's just, it's like trying to fill in a void somewhere that you can't, because you're not really happy. You do not have to go and buy something brand spanking you every day to be happy. You don't. I mean, who, where did we get so off track that we think we have to do this? I don't know. Somewhere down the pike. I mean, we all, even me. I mean, I thought I had to go do all this. Y'all, you don't. You do not. I mean, it's really a shame. I guess step one is see See what makes you happy. And you may not know what makes you happy yet. And I think that's a lot of people's problems. I didn't know I liked all this stuff. I knew that I liked chicks, little baby chicks at Easter when I was a little girl. And I just knew I wanted some chickens. And I got some chickens. And then I wanted me a little garden. Didn't know what I was doing. But along the way, I become so happy with all of this. And I really found where where I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. And... I never set out with this intention. Someone asked me that last week. They said, did you always want to do this? Not really. I just knew I was a country girl and just liked stuff like that. I didn't know that this is what I wanted to make my life out of. And now I do. Did our great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers run around, you know, spending money every day and all that? No, you're going to hear of stories kind of like, wartime stories you're going to hear the financial wartime stories of no we had one pot with a hole in it when we first got married and i had to cook out of that after i stuffed a rag down in the center of it you're going to hear stuff like that you're going to hear it was so cold that winter and i didn't think you know you're, you're going to hear stuff like that that's how they lived a lot of them didn't know any different because everybody was in the same boat so but they they knew how to make things stretch they knew how to preserve stuff. And what I mean by that is they knew how to, to keep things. We are in such a throwaway society. Like, I again, I'm not getting on to you. I'm there. I get it. Or I was there. If something was uh, uh, torn up, I'd just throw it away. You know, we don't fix stuff anymore. I don't even know if what we have we can fix, really. I don't know if we have the skills to do it. And I don't know if... 
I mean, this stuff's so differently made now. Y'all know this. I don't have to tell you this. It's disposable. It, it's just, you just chunk it. I'm talking about everything from a washing machine. It used to be somebody come out and service that. You know, oh, it had to be serviced. There was people running around in these uh, fixer-upper shops and everything else. You don't even see that anymore. There, it's just done. It's at the end of its road, and you go get another one. Why, you know... I'm going to get down another road with that one, <laughs> another tangent. So let me just stick to why I save money. It's really survival. That's what pulled my family through a lot of hard times way back when, 100 years ago, really 100 years ago. And that seems like it was so far off, but everything comes full circle, okay? And everything revolves. And what does it say? History. Well, they say history repeats itself. Okay, I think these are great skills to have. So the first thing, why save money? Start out in the kitchen, okay? That's probably, unless you have some humongous mortgage payment or some kind of car payment that is just outrageous, I would guess that the number one thing people are paying for are groceries. Why on earth would you spend a bunch of money at the grocery store when you could eat a little bit different and maybe save some money? Why? I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me this stuff. Maybe you can help me so I can help you, okay? Again, and, and thank y'all to all the comments. Everybody's becoming very interactive. They're curious about this, so let's, let's talk it out, okay? Maybe I can help you because I was at the grocery store. I would go buy stuff at the grocery store. What stopped me from doing that was growing it on my own. Once I grew it on my own, I preserved it on my own, and then I wanted to eat it because, man, I was out there working hard. I wanted to eat what I put up and grew. That started saving the grocery bill right there. I wanted to, to eat and try all of this that I grew, and then I grew so much because so many of us do. We're guilty about going out and planting so much that we don't know what to do with all of it give it away, give it to people that need it, but put it up. I mean, put up your harvest, and when you do, then you start eating it because you don't want it to go to waste, and don't ever throw it out and not eat it. Oh, man, y'all, don't do that. Eat what you grow, unless you just can't take it. <laughs> you just hate it, but you get what I'm saying overall. That right there, eating what I grew, led to not buying as much at the grocery store because just like, green beans. I've talked about those. My very first year, I canned 75 quarts and then had a deep freezer that was half full of them. I mean, it was, the green beans were coming out of my ears, okay? I wasn't going and buying those at the store because I had enough to keep us through all winter and all spring until the next year when they, well, you know, until they started producing again. So, I didn't go buy that. That was the first key. You're going to spend some initial investments homesteading, like I bought a canner. You're gonna buy jars and lids and rings and the whole nine yards and a little canning kit and you're gonna get all this and a canning book. But then after that, it starts paying for itself in the long run. You may need to put forth that initial investment, but then it will save you money back. I don't know how, I guess I could do the math now at the price of green beans now, but I don't know how much money we've saved on green beans because a sack of feed costs three, four dollars, or I say feed, y'all. You tell my mind's on chickens, a sack of green bean seed. I mean, it costs a couple bucks and then it's your time. So, I mean, really y'all, that started saving money. Grocery bills are ridiculous. I refuse to go pay money for stuff that I can grow and do it so much cheaper. I don't think you're gonna see that it's cheaper until you go out and do it on your own. And then you're gonna be like, whoa, it just seems like the very first year you do it, you're going to be pleasantly surprised and then you just get, it just grows from there. So, that's why I save money. That's, that's how I save money. And then that started. I've always been frugal. I've always put back money aside. But y'all, it is, it's really been weighing on my mind lately. Like, where are we going to be in a couple of years? What, you know, I won't food put up. I want money put up. I want just to pay less for the bills. I'm tired of paying the power company. I am. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I've got one lamp on here that I hadn't had on in two months. I just don't use it and I just, you know, no, I'm not going to pay them that. 
no. You know, people talk about uh, in the summer months, the, the price goes up, whether you use the air conditioner or not. I mean, oh, why? Why is that okay, you know? If it goes up, my air goes up. I'll just bump it on up higher. Let it run. Let it kick on at 76 degrees. And in the wintertime, 64. Stuff like that you can do if you if you wanted to. This is all like I get way out there with this. I like to save every dime I can. So, I, you know, you may not be that extreme, but maybe tonight, like, if your heat stays on 68, cut it down to 67. Cut it down to 66. It may help a few pennies. I don't know. I don't know, but it may help you. That's why I say it because I just, you can use money other places or either just put it up in case you need it. That's, that's the whole thing. And I talk about growing vegetables and animals, but y'all, homesteading is a way of life where you save money. You, you have to, if you want to work the land 24 seven and that's your job, you have to because your income is what comes off this land and it just goes hand in hand. Thrifty, saving, putting back for a rainy day, it just, it goes hand in hand. Now, I'm a country girl, y'all know this by now, and I live out in the country. I, you know, everywhere I look, it's a pine tree and it's just open hills. But if you live in a city or in town or wherever, just say you've got a nice cookie cutter yard in a subdivision or you live in an apartment, you can still save money. You can do this. Think creatively, okay? Think creatively. First thing is quit throwing stuff away. If it's a container, like um, just say you, you got some lunch meat and it's a little plastic container. Don't throw it away. Keep it. Use that to take your lunch in. Make your own lunch. You know, instead of going and buying a lunch container or a snack holder or whatever, use what you have. If you've already put the money forth, recycle what you can out of it. If you, um, I don't know, I don't know how it goes in an apartment. Just say you live in town and you've got a dryer and a washing machine, but you don't really want a clothesline in the neighborhood. Okay, get you a dryer rack. I call it dryer, clothes rack. Uh, just a collapsible rack. You can put it up in your dining room. Won't nobody ever know it. Put it up in your den. You know, it save you a little money off your power bill with the dryer. This, and why? Because you want to be financially free. And you don't know what's coming around the bend. And it's a good idea. It's a really good idea. If any life-changing event happens or any kind of, disaster or problem or emergency, you will be prepared and you won't have to just fly off the cuckoo's nest because you don't know what's coming next. And I may have something terrible happen tomorrow. I don't know, but I'm a little bit more prepared today than I was yesterday by changing these habits. If you're homesteading, you are in the prime spot to be saving money. You ought to be saving money. I mean, you ought not be going and getting fast food every night, okay? <laughs> not unless you just absolutely want to. All right. We are growing our own food for a reason. Y'all know that. And we like to grow our own food because we like it and it's healthier and it's, it's fun and it's good habits. You are in the prime spot to be saving money, okay? You can have a clothesline out on your farm. You can have this stuff. You ought to be doing that stuff. So I'm not really talking to you guys. I'm just saying you need to, I'm like your mama here. <laughs> you need to keep on and keep it on and keep thinking of different ways. If you live in town or in an apartment or whatever in the city, just get creative. Google this stuff, look online, or like I said, I'm gonna try with these shorts. I just don't know, these YouTube shorts, I just don't know how life goes in the city. I have no clue. I mean, I've been to a couple major cities in my lifetime, and that was driving through on the interstate. I just don't, and that was the outskirts. I don't know. I don't even know what it's like. So, y'all, I, I told you, I just don't know about this kind of stuff. But I do know that you can save money. Quit buying fast food. Make it at home. Cook it. Stuff like that. It's just, it's just any way to get you financially free, and at the end of the day, you're more sustainable. You're sustaining yourself off what you had. You're not having to have 
an increase in income or a pay raise, you're making what you have last longer. It's kind of the same theory. And it's just like the old saying, waste not, want not. You know, really, that's the truth, y'all. It's, it's fun and games if you want to try. I think, you know, it's fun, it's creative. But like I said on my last Chicken Scratch Talk Time, we've come to a serious point in time where money savings, you know, it's, it really needs to be getting up there in priorities because times are just different. And it's, you know, I wish everybody my age could live this lifestyle or either think in this mentality. It just seems like it's, you know, bye, 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 and do, 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 and run, 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 and everything is so fast and fast paced. And what happened to just sitting out on the porch swing and just, and just listening and being quiet for a while, what happened to that? It, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm an old soul, y'all can tell. And I certainly have not lived through financial times many of y'all have. You know, I just, I kind of see where things are headed. And like I said, I'm an old soul. So I see, you know, if the price of stuff's going up, I'm trying to help you here. And I really think a lot of younger people are trying to follow us to see how to save money. So save money to live free, to not owe anybody. Okay. That's a good feeling to have. And do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. If you've got kids, I'm going to tell you this right now, instill this in them at a very young age to save. Because that was instilled in me. And that has helped me many a time. And it's it's been wonderful. And it will start at a very young age. So they, they know what mom and dad do. They know. And being around that, they'll want to mimic and copy and be like that and if you weren't raised that way well who's to say that you can't start today y'all that, that's what i'm saying <laughs> i don't know if you're you can understand me or not but homesteading i'm going out here every day and i'm working so hard but i'm doing what i want to do and i'm doing something that actually is putting food on the table what i'm doing right now is no different than my husband bringing home a paycheck what I'm doing is no different than me bringing home a paycheck. Either way, it puts food on the table and pays the bills. We're going to get to a point about making income off of crops and stuff like that. We're going to we're going to talk about that. Right now, I th think it's more of in the the baby stages, and we're just kind of you know getting our feet off the ground to know to talk about this kind of stuff or be around it. But guys. This way of life is just, if you love it, give it all you got. Give it all you've got and see what you can do because there is nothing like being free and not having to depend on so many companies and so many uh, creditors and so many, uh, you know, there's, it just don't even matter. It just don't even matter at the end of the day. Find what makes you happy and go from there, but you can be frugal. You can, you can do it. What do I always tell you? If I can do it, you can do it. Very young to be doing this. It was instilled at a young age and I think it's just, I think it's great and it's wonderful. And I hope everybody will take a little piece from this and save, save a little extra. And I'm gonna ask you, what's your, number one, money saving tips. I'd like to hear y'all's idea and see. And um, money saving doesn't have to be this, oh, we're just in doom and gloom and we're not gonna, oh, I've got to have something bought. And I've just, go, be be realistic about it. You can go buy, you can go do, but just don't go ridiculous, obsessed with it. just Because I've been there, done that, I get it. And it's just not, it really all depends on what matters to you. You can start out small and you can change it along the way and you can increase what you're doing. Live free. Live free. Put some money back. Follow along with this. We're going to keep this up. We'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead. Bye, guys.